Hey guys, welcome back to the African Lure Craftsman. This is the 14th and final episode of the Garfish build. There she is, complete with hooks, with the bibina. And uh, what we did yesterday is we took her to the epoxy cabinet and we epoxied her. You're going to see that just now. I must admit that due to commitments and other commitments and guests arriving and various things like that, I've only put one coat on her so far and I'll probably will be doing another coat or two, thin coats, um, and then she'll be relegated to the, um, the cabinet where she'll sit until we decide whether to use her or not and get her chewed to pieces. Yet to decide that, as I say. But um, it's been a long, long journey. Uh, just thinking about 14 episodes, a lot of those an hour long, uh, makes me think about the hours put into this build. And uh, I think that I could honestly say there's probably a minimum of 150 hours in this build um, with the things that I've done on the side. And the, that's not, uh, uh, taking into account that epoxying is an 18 hour cure time, things like that. Um, but it's been fun along the way and we've got plenty of more interesting stuff um, lined up to come your way. A couple of little issues I had taking out of the epoxy cabinet. There was a little bit of epoxy and debris in the bib slot and I stuck the bib in without cleaning it out and it got really, really stuck in there. Um, I was worried then that I'd, when I pulled it out it might actually crack the epoxy. Fortunately it didn't. I just kind of like cut over the edge there with a, a sharp scalpel and just eased it out. I've since cleaned that out, got a little file in there, got all the debris out, got a scalpel and scraped inside there and basically she does come in and out now, not a problem. Um, there were a few little blemishes on it but they hardly, hardly noticeable and the, the second and third coats after a little bit of a rub down with a thousand grit uh, water paper will get rid of those easily and she'll cup, I think get a much deeper sort of look as well. But um, yeah, I mean for all intents and purposes not looking too bad at all. Got a lovely action still. I don't think we lost any of the action with the multiple layer, uh, foils of layer and epoxy and paint and things like that. Um, and yeah, if, if my 10 cents is worth anything, I think she'll get chewed to pieces by the first game fish that sees her. Um, I'd love to try, as one of our viewers has said, I'd love to try her on, on big uh, mulloway, or as we call them in South Africa and in Africa in general, cobbleyo. Um, and I think, yeah, this lure is just going to get eaten. Um, but yeah, it's been a fantastic build. It's been a lot of fun. It's been great to have you all along with us. And I've really enjoyed the comments and the uh, rapport we've had going. Okay, guys, we're here at the epoxy cabinet. I've already rigged this up. Um, I used the old trick we used before. I've put elastic bands in between. And utilizing the tail hook here, I've used one of my springs and then to the front wire. They're very firm. There's no touching of any of the, the, the uh, segments here. And then the tail, I've just put onto a little paintbrush end there uh, and rigged it up with lacky bands. And that's very firm as well. So we're going to give it a couple of coats of epoxy. Um, the other thing I did before I, I bought it here was I just sanded back these fins a little bit more since our last session. Um, just so you get a little bit more see-through effect and hopefully when we apply the epoxy that'll be very apparent. Okay, I've got Mac helping here just operate the cabinet. I still haven't fitted my foot pedal. It's not due to being lazy, it's more due to being busy. So I'm using a smaller brush today because we've got a few intricate areas to get into. I'm going to start with the tail, so let's just get that done on the one side and I can see that's already looking lovely get right into the sides there or into the little crevices the top the back there we don't want any excess running off though I know even though it's a rotisserie it can still form a few little lumps in some places so we've done that side I'm just going to do the main body here Trying not to get any uh, too much around the, the actual stem of the paintbrush or the handle of the paintbrush here because that could actually cause some problems as well. Um, so let's, and we want thin coats. Bearing in mind, every layer we add, we are shortening the, the gap between the segments and we don't want to do that too much. 
I know it might, might seem insignificant, but it can actually sometimes make a difference. Okay, we can roll now. Okay. Let's get this side done. Okay, give me top and bottom Mac. See, we had missed a bit there. Very important to check all sides all the time. You might find gaps. Okay, bottom. Yeah, again. There we go. Okay, other side. Yeah, stop. That's it. Okay, that's the tail done, I think. Let me just check it over. Remember, we, remember we're giving it a few coats, so... Um, we do get a second chance at this, but after that other coat, not much thereafter. Stop. There's a little bit of a lump here, I see. It might be in the, in the, have been in the cup. Okay, that's gone. Okay, so we've done that. Let's get on to the main body. Starting with the head segment. <clears throat> I'm going to apply quite liberally to start with. I don't want to, uh, drag my brush over these edges here because it'll really cause an excess to run down there which i'm i'm loath to be cleaning off later we want plenty in the eye though and in the crease of the mouth on the back of the fin and under the fin but again remember those those edges Yeah, a little bit difficult this one, but hey, you know what? It's not like it was anyone else's choice to make this, so I've got to live with it, I guess. Okay, right into the front eye here. Along the top, although we'll get there later as well. Okay, and that's really looking sweet. I like that. I'm going to put a little bit more on the eye. Although you do sometimes have problems with bubbles forming under the eyes. I don't want too much there, but that's looking nice. Okay, let's go the other side. Same applies on this side. Let's get behind the fins, on the fins. Wow, it just really makes that foil scale pop and come alive that. I'm sure you'd probably only see that in the sun, but I can see it looking with my specs close up. It's looking really, really nice. Uh, I might have just put some excess into the, the groove for the lip which we can try and drag out just now there's there's no doubt i'm gonna to have to be cleaning that up because there's <laughs> there's no way we can not we can do this without getting something in there okay a little bit more around the eye just a bit okay we can go to the top and bottom rotate a few times there please mac thanks <clears throat> get that done so one of the things I had done earlier is I was worried about the internals here and this overlay so what I did is I had done them earlier this morning in the Sun with a UV activated epoxy on each side using that same trick we did before lying it over something and I had done those, so they've, it's all been epoxied everywhere now. So I'm not too worried about getting this in there or having to coat it inside there. We'll have a look afterwards when it's dry, remove the rubber band, see what happens. But I think it will be okay, I think. Um, if not, we, we get it on the second coat. Uh, okay, let's just rotate a bit, Mac, thanks. Okay, bottom. 
Here's where we have to be careful with that bib groove. A bit more. Yeah, otherwise it's not in the light. Okay, that looks okay. Oh, here's, I'm going to go across this way on that. And then take it from there. Remember, applying your heat gun later and your lighter, your cigarette lighter, is going to smooth out any brush strokes or anything you might have. I can see a little spot there, but it's not removing anyway. It's not a train smash. We could always do a white coat over there. It's not even that serious, to be honest. Um, okay, I think, I think we've got everything there. Okay, let's just rotate and make and have a look. Okay, stop on here. Yeah. Okay, another little lump. I think it's the same one that was on the brush. I hope I got it off. Okay, go. Great thing about epoxy is it is such a long curing time it can be quite forgiven so with a little bit of heat if you see something that needs touching up you can actually do it a bit later once you've finished the whole whole bait or several baits if you're doing several i'm painting downwards here because i'm just worried about getting too much behind these sections here um, so i'm just going to do that and of course i need to get around the petrol fin there into the grooves of the wire there, just twirl it around, right up to the end there, okay let's just get some decent amount on that silver stripe, oh a bit, a bit difficult, not my normal sort of thing I must say because it's normally quite easy but anyway there are problems with delamination and things like that, which is why you normally put on lots of coats and take those precautions of washing. Could be a concern on this around those edges, but I don't think I'm going to worry about it for now. Um, we'll see what it looks like after this first coat and then, and then take it from there. Maybe scuff it up a bit, put a coat over, uh, maybe put some more UV. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll see how it goes. Um, Okay, top bottom. Okay, bottom. Okay, I'm noticing where my epoxy has excess here. There's a lot of bubbles, guys. Be very careful of that. That's why we do several thin coats rather than one thick coat. Um, but other than that, this is looking okay. Okay, that's done. Mac, let's go into the next. Just spread it around first, then we'll get it applied on there. I mean, that's the main thing. Then you can neaten it up and make all your strokes the same way, although ultimately you won't see those anyways. But just make sure everything's covered. Um, I've got a little bit of excess there. There it goes. Okay, go over that. Okay, I've got a missed spot on the bottom. Go again. And the top I see there in the light. It's a good thing about a rotisserie, guys, with good lighting. Well, this isn't the best. Is on those rotations, you'll see where you've obviously missed, uh, missed places. Um, so... Okay, go. I can still see it there. Stop. No, on the top. On the top. <laughs> My top, not your top. Okay, there we go. Okay, go. Yeah, that looks like it's covered. Two more sections to go, guys. Okay, now that last section in the little, um, little fins. And we're done here. So, okay. I'll do 
that section first there right into those fins and then do those remembering the front the back the underneath as well although you don't want to drag the brush and leave epoxy pooling anywhere that's not going to look too nice okay around here this one's a bit tight because the elastic bands are right close to the the edge there but again we should be okay okay now this side of the fin getting it into the grooves just run it there first get some material on there and on the top underneath and there what is that I'm seeing there hmm not too sure at this stage okay let's go around the other side get a bit more epoxy okay and now we remember we're going over that spot and that's kind of like jumping out nicely gonna get this done while I remember and done there the top underneath yeah it's looking quite sweet I think get right into there right on that little point of the the dorsal first coat done let's just rotate it a bit and we'll check everything see this brush is quite coarse so it's, it leaves furrows that you think might might then be areas you haven't actually reached okay go rotate mac okay looking okay to me i think all we need to do there is get a heat gun on it and then a lighter burn any possible bubbles and that coat will be fine so let's just leave it for five minutes and we'll get back to that now we have our heat gun ready and armed remembering these things are very very hot eh? so i always use it on a low heat um, and what we're going to do is just go over this smooth out that epoxy um, I, I try not to focus on eyes if they're 3d eyes because you can raise bubbles by heating up the oxygen or any oxygen trapped underneath and then they start popping out um, so I'm going to go over it very very quickly um, and then we're going to apply lighter to it and then basically we just leave it and it's done checking on it occasionally to see if anything else has happened or any bubbles have come up so let me do that quickly Okay, now to the lighter guys uh, pink my favorite color not really but anyway um, working well let's get the glasses on and we just stop it in sections and run along even touching the flame to it don't keep the flame on anything okay go okay when you see a little spot apply some attention to it go so what the light is actually doing here is obviously if there's any micro bubbles in the epoxy it's going to pop those bring them to the surface and actually just pop those out so you get a, a crystal clear sort of finish i can see a little few specks in here but i'm not concerned about that we're going over another coat remember and what i can do is take this off or even bring a little bit of water paper here sand those down um, the eyes as i say be careful not to apply too much heat and also guys remember with the flame don't put direct flame onto it because what might happen then is you get black from the lighter on the on the epoxy okay go so on the bottom fin here uh, stop there i can see there's a section in one of the grooves that hasn't actually taken any epoxy into it so i'm just going to get that done again and this is after being so careful to make sure it's in there okay that's in there now 
So let's just apply a bit of heat to that straight away. Smooth it out. Okay, go. Okay, go. This is the difficult part here. Okay, we haven't got any into the the groove for the bib there, so I'm quite chuffed about that. Okay, go. I can see where it's running here, but it should sort out with the rotisserie. Okay, go. On those fins. Good thing about these lighters as well, guys, with electric starcher, you don't get flint flicking onto the onto the bait, which can be quite a hassle then to remove. And pretty much, I can see a little bubble there, that's tiny gone. Pretty much that's it. Okay, go. That's covered. Done it all, go, rotate. So that's as simple as it is. It, epoxy plied, we can leave that. There's an 18 hour cure time on tar bender. I generally find that if you have it in this sort of weather and it's what about 20 22 degrees thereabouts it's not humid if you leave this now for about six hours you can turn the the rotisserie cabinet off it's not going to run anywhere and it'll cure overnight we'll then be off to the pool and testing it in the pool and seeing how this swims Whoa. The local Harley Club going past. Nothing wrong with Harleys. Guys, what we're going to do now is the pool's behind, um, behind us over here, or in front of me actually. We're going to go over there and we're going to uh, check it out. Um, and for the next few minutes, or maybe several minutes, we're just going to swim it and let you guys view it and see what you think. I'm pretty impressed, I think, that it hasn't changed much from its standard wood form. It's still got all those nice actions understanding that it's very hard to work it in a pool and film the right shots so kind of like a little bit of a puppet on a string type thing we're just going to drag it along drag it over the camera drag it in front of the camera do what we can and just see what it looks like enjoy what you see and let us know in the comments if you like it
Guys, I hope you enjoyed the swim test. Um, I think you'll agree it looks quite sexy. Uh, you know, there's always going to be improvements I think we can make, but you learn that with each build you do. Things I'd do differently, I've said before, uh, the hook points, I'd move them further apart, things like that. But hey, it's a first go, might live in a cabinet, might get eaten, we don't know. But if you like what you've seen so far and you want to join us in more adventures, hit like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.